So let's discuss bootstrap modal controls. So we're going to show you how you can do this without Angular and with Angular. So it's two slightly different ways in order to accomplish this generally the same thing. We get a little extra nice niceties with using the Angular route. So here's how you would launch it without Angular. So the, the demo modal here, we can pop it up and we'll close it real quick. And basically in order to do this, we need to have this data BS toggle modal and we need to have a modal uh, class right here. So we also have the fade option to kind of fade in as opposed to just popping in. So we also have it linked with the example modal here and primary button, all that other good stuff. So here's our label for this actual modal is this modal title. So it's using the title as the label for assistive technologies. And this just shows uh, that it's a hidden element for screen readers. All right, so within the modal class, we need to have a dialog. So you can see this class wraps the whole control. And within, we're going to have a content block. And within the content block, we can have a header, body, and footer. So the header can have a title, as we see here, the modal title, which is also defining the control. And it can have a close button here. Um, this is the, let's see, here's the button close class that styles the X, as we see right there. So there's our modal title with the modal title class. Um, so this is also going to close it out. If we hit the X button right here, this data BS dismiss modal. We also have it in a couple other places and we'll talk about that. So that's how we dismiss this, this modal. And um, this is just for assisted technology again. So we have some, we have string interpolation on the back end, just linking this uh, body class right here. And here's our footer. We have a close and a save button, which basically do the same thing in this case. They're both being dismissed from the modal. So normally with the save, you'd go do some background processing. Um, so this this would work if you if you clicked on this, we can add a click, you know, click equal do something. And we could run that and would run in the background. The thing about this is it's just going to close this window no matter what. So let's say you had an error here. This modal but this modal window is just going to be gone, and you'll have to display that and say, "Hey, pop up that window again and re-enter things." So normally you want to stop that from happening. So in order to do that, we need a little help from our friend Angular. So we're going to show you how that works. I'm going to go ahead and close this. Um, the structure is pretty similar. Um, we don't have to do the data toggle for the modal. We just have an open class that we're going to have to call because we need to capture this object, an instance of this object. When we open it, we're going to basically create it. And then once we've created it, we're going to close it. And that'll give us an opportunity to run some processing in the save. And if the processing fails, then we won't close it. And we can pop up an error message, which we could add somewhere in here to say, hey, you had an error in trying to process it. The server's down or there was an error within the data. And crapped out on the back end, something like that. And so that's really the benefit to doing this. Uh, other than that, the structure is similar. You know, we took out some of these other link, links between. Um, we still left our data dismiss for the close buttons. But let's just kind of talk about the open and the close method and how different they are and, why, and, and how they're used. So here's the open method. As you see, we're going to this the test modal which is defined up here with the modal class, which is imported from Bootstrap. And this is only going to work in this particular case if we're using uh, the NPM ins installation. And we'll talk about how to get around this by using the quick install in just one second. But let's just go through the open real quick. So with our strict mode, we have to also define it as potentially undefined. So in order to use this, in some cases, we got to use this question mark, which basically says if it's null, just don't continue. Just, but if it is, if it isn't null, then go ahead and run the next method. So in order to new it up, we have to call this bootstrap modal, and then we have to pass in the element. So in order to get the element, we have to have its ID, and as you see up here, we have the test modal with the ID. You can also get it with the pound, and so that gets the element. We pass it in with the set of options and in this case, keyboard equal false. And then we toggle it on with the show. 
And whenever we're closing it and trying to save, we're going to do some long-winded processing or send it off to a server. And when we get the promise back, we're, if it's uh, unaired or that everything's saved or we in some way say, you know, you're good to go, you can go ahead and hit the toggle button on this test, test modal to go ahead and close everything. Just the way you do with data dismiss, it just, once you hit the data dismiss, it closes the modal right away. And in this case, we want to make sure we do our processing and then come back and turn it off. So I hope uh, after going through this, um, you kind of see the nice, easy way to use Angular with modal. Um, kind of the, the one real big difference is the ability to close it on demand as opposed to with these data, dis, uh, data dismiss classes. Um, so that way you can do whatever processing, do whatever checks you got to do. And once you're done, then you can go get rid of everything. So I hope this has been helpful. And if you like it, subscribe, like uh, whatever you want to do. I uh, appreciate it. Thanks.